All right, so um and tell ye and uh you are John Dramani Mahama a soft we could good them a do a monster a gun is so a bomb pie a demand or na and what she a soft will be a barrier a barbecue trauma dream a be Kenya me a dream at the afaho and one of them a year the most prominent pastor a work gun ha I see GC you are main sir or table Mesa or Tabu. Papa, we in him before pa. What in semi habit to get to say, I saw for one more do a monse go you were John Dramani Mahama, so you know, Obia a fake. God has not spoken to any of them, so therefore, they are all fake, they are all liars, they are lying to ex president John Dramani Mahama. So, and my one funny name, Trussosa, so funny, I'm going to say goodness, no, he is going to win. Was it a so funny, I'm going to say goodness, no, they are lying to you, they are lying to you, Mr. Mahama. Seek God's hand, go out there, campaign to the people. Because the people are going to vote for you. But I see a soft one on one say it is going to be a total loss for NDC. You are Mensa Otabio and Wakasano. I see this is for penny. I was your yenti about penny musum, a be embran one casami and a mekaye. Make the mistake to say so we should imitate Samson and and learn from his ways and go and go and do what Samson did <laughs> and go and lie on a lady's lap and tell her all your secrets. Are you crazy? What's wrong with you, Mr. Samson? What's wrong with you, Mr. Samson? And, the, and when he's do, the, the, thing, the thing about Samson that I can get, you try it once and the lady calls the Philistines. So you should by now say that, hey, we are in trouble. Oh. If I tell my secret, I'm in trouble. He does it twice. He does it until now. The Bible says now he can't stop. So he says it. So you see that this man has no discipline, has no moral compass, has no real integrity. But God is using his strength. We must be very careful. Very careful, Pentecostals and Charismatics. When you see people supposedly used by God, but who have obvious, obvious, clearly character flaws. Character flaws. Obvious. The man is sleeping with all the ladies. Having sex with all the girls in the church. We cannot say, but he's anointed. We have to know. Maybe there is a small group of people that has to be rich. Yes, God is using them, but he's not endorsing them. And the supposed miracles happening in their lives is not an endorsement of their character. Because sometimes, you know, I, I hear pastors preach, speaking and say, if I be a man of God, who are you? I mean, what, what, what are they saying? You think God answers you because you are a man of God? God answers us because of his mercy. You think you have impressive credentials? If I me, it be a, a prophet, if I be a man of God. Shut up and sit down. You are just another human being that God picks somewhere by the roadside and is using. Shut up and sit down. All this boasting of spiritual authority, spiritual privilege, spiritual uniqueness, we see happening in the church. And from obviously flawed people. They are liars, they are cheats, they are uh, fornicators, they are adulterers, they are idolaters. That means they are practicing idol worship, fetishism in the church. And somehow we think, Oh, there, there is also a grace. I'm happy you said grace. Because grace is God's covering for your foolishness. If you are a pastor here, go to school. For those of you who are older already, you are you're, you're past helping. 
we'll take you like that. <laughs> we'll take you like that. <laughs> and and, and, uh, and, and you, we'll, we'll ease you off. We'll take you like that. All of you who are older will take you like that. But those who are coming, we are talking about the next generation, influencing the ne- those who are coming, these generations who, if you sense God has called you, you have to go to seminary. You have to. If you are in your 20s, you feel God has called you, go to seminary. If you are in your 30s, God has called you, go to seminary. If you are in your 40s, God has called you, go to seminary. If you are in your 50s, we'll hold you like that. We'll hold you like that. 50s, 60s. We'll just manage with you and ease you out. May you do no harm to the next generation. (laughs) May you do no harm to the next generation. But we'll hold you like that. The charismatic church. We see so much power. And maybe that is what all of you see. But I see so much danger. And so much self-destruction. So much dissipation of confidence. More and more the congregation and the public is losing confidence in us. They are losing confidence in men of God, in clergymen. If you call yourself a prophet, it's almost like a title meaning con man. How can we take such a sacred title that Isaiah had, that Jeremiah had, that Ezekiel had, that Daniel had, all of these great people? We have so commoditized it and so cheapened it that now this noble title almost means a con man. Because there's no regulatory body. Everybody picks titles as they want and parade with it. Bishop. When I was growing up, if somebody was a bishop, we believed that they were a no- noble person in the clergy. Because the churches which had bishops in Ghana were two, mainly. The Catholic Church and the Anglican Church. And their bishopric was based on the diocesan system. The Catholic Church, as far as I can remember when I was growing up, had I think about six also diocese in, in Ghana. So six bishops. The Anglican church had similar, probably less. Maybe six bishops. Later the Catholic church expanded its dioceses. I think now they have probably about 20 something dioceses in, in Ghana. About 20 something or whatever bishops. Anglican church similar. Then Charismatics and Pentecostal say we won't spoil there. We take whatever is noble, apostle. We have made apostle cheap. We've made prophet cheap. Then we say, Bishop, now it's your turn. And we have desecrated it so that the title Bishop has no nobility attached to it again. Any person with three lizards is a bishop. And if in all of these things you don't see self-destruction, then your, your powers of deduction are very weak. If you can't see destruction, can you imagine in Ghana where everybody who has never been to law school is called a lawyer? I get up and say, hey, I'm a lawyer. From today I'm lawyer, so and so and so. I'm architect so and so, I'm doctor so and so. Can you imagine what will happen to the health profession? Or the legal profession? Or the judiciary? I get up, I say, uh, hey, well, I, I'm able to decide people's matter. From now I'm judge, I'm chief justice, men's <laughs> Can you imagine what will happen to the legal profession? Or the pharmaceutical profession. 
or to any profession engineering just think of it and that's what has is happening we've taken the noble characters the noble titles the noble offices that people toil for to build value and integrity for charismatics attack it and dissipate it and when they have dissipated it now he will go and call himself chief bishop major bishop major prophet i mean it's as if our nonsense is not enough we have to we have to invent new nonsense and wearing all kinds of attires you know the catholics they have their attire Anglicans had their attire. Protestants, mainline Protestants, only wear the main clerical uh, collar, and that's about it. There is no episcopacy, and they don't uh, escalate. And charismatic say we won't spoil there. We saw bishops wear maxi skirt, so we say we we'll wear maxi skirt, and we won't do the maxi skirt well. We we'll go and do all kinds of things, and then we we'll do a hat, and we we'll do feathers in it, and, and you wonder what what is the meaning of it? Is this is nice? And you see, charismatic. I see sometimes people wearing these fancy dresses. They say they are bishop wearing fancy dresses, fancy dresses. What is the meaning? What is the theological significance? What is the philosophy? What is the historicity of it? How does it work with your self-proclaimed beliefs? It's nice. It will make you powerful. Years ago, years ago, about 30 years ago, I met a friend of mine who had just been made a bishop. So I saw him and said, Hey, Wujaf, you are not a bishop. Say, Yeah, 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 yeah. And I saw a cross in around his neck. And he's put the the cross on his in his pocket. I said, Oh, okay. You are married to the church now. You are wearing a ring. You are married to the church. Now you know the Catholics they don't marry the, their, their, their wife is the church they are married to the church forever so the church is always on their heart you your wife is on your heart so the, the thing you are wearing itself its significance is lost on you yeah somebody say polygamy you've married a second wife <laughs> So, so he's wearing all of this. I said, why are you doing this? Have you church, studied church history? Do you understand where clergy garments came from? Do you understand why they do so and so? Do you understand why they hold this and all of that and all? Does it work with your own theology as a Pentecostal? Is it consistent? You say, hey, my brother, this thing to open doors. It to open doors. To open doors. I said, what does? He says, now, since I became this, you know, they call for big meetings for bishops and I'm also invited. And the Ghanaian society is that, you know, because our society is unregulated, the media too, the media just use titles by heart. A Habalis is a doctor. And all kinds of people. So, they, they don't even discern and help to correct the mistakes of the society they amplify it so at this point in time pastor Isud, i don't know when i look into the future of charismatism i see self-destruction you know it's one thing i like about the catholic and the anglican church because the pastors the clergy they are learned to hand handle they are trained to handle confidential information because people go for confession and they tell the priest 
stuff and the priest has to handle that information confidential if it was charismatics and people did confession <laughs> we'll have prayer topics we'll have prayer topics we have preaching topics we have uh, insinuation topics <laughs> we have we have control manipulation remember the thing you told me remember the thing you told me if i tell your wife right now come and sow seed <laughs> Thank God nobody comes from confession to charismatics. You have to learn to handle confidential information. And what God shows you is confidential information. But we blast it. Sometimes humiliate people in public. The Lord showed me this about you and we describe people's health challenges publicly. Embarrassing situations that they wish nobody hears. God told you about it and you feel that the best way is to announce it publicly. The sad thing is even after we have publicly disgraced them, there is no healing. The Pentecostal charismatic church is on a one-way highway drive to self-destruction. And it's because generations after generations are using the example of the previous generation as theirs they lie they are like the man who prayed with a cat and generations come and think the cat is more important than the prayer if you are a pastor here go to school if you sense god has called you you have to go to seminary now, if you believe that anybody who carries the title apostle or anybody who carries the title prophet is the one Jesus, uh, Paul is talking about, then you would have a church culture where everybody is calling himself an apostle and everybody is calling himself a prophet. Why? Because they want to be seen as the foundation pillars of the church. Uh, uh, to give themselves the authority to, to, to determine what happens in the church. And uh, I think for most Ghanaians, charismatic Ghanaians, at this point in time, a lot of people believe the apostles and the prophets that the Bible is talking about here refers to people who are called apostles and prophets. So these days, it is very easy to find people called apostles and prophets somebody starts uh yesterday he was an unbeliever today he gets born again uh tomorrow he attends uh pastor eastwood's conference and pastor eastwood prays on him and uh, lays hands on him and the next day after that uh he is called apostle and 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 uh he he has jumped everything you know he's just apostolated himself uh, or somebody is praying and he sees a mosquito in a dream or he sees a lizard or he sees something he calls himself a, prof a prophet um, and because it is a self-help environment when we say something is self-help it means it has no process everybody is helping himself uh, if you want to take the title nobody can stop you uh, if you want to say you're apostle, nobody can stop you. So we have all kinds of things called apostle and all kinds of things called prophet. But what did the scripture mean when it says the apostles and the prophets are the foundation on which the cornerstone has erected his church? And yesterday I explained what this text means. The apostles here are basically the 12 apostles of jesus christ the 12 apostles of jesus christ and later including paul that is it it is a closed group it is not an open-ended group and a self-evolving group it is a closed group and that's it the foundation on the cornerstone is 
the apostles of Jesus Christ, those who were with Jesus directly, physically, during his earthly ministry, and those who encountered him supernaturally, and that's only one man, Paul, who encountered Christ post-resurrection, and the existing apostles of Jesus Christ who were with him physically, gave Paul the right hand of fellowship and recognized that although he was not with them in Galilee when they were with Jesus, they ac acknowledged that Paul has had an encounter with Jesus that qualifies him to be numbered amongst them as the original apostle. Now why is this important? This is important, pastors, because apostles have got canonical authority canonical authority what do we mean by canonical authority it means that their writings and their teachings are recognized as scripture their writings and teachings recognized as scripture and that is why the letters of paul were recognized as scripture the letters of peter recognized as scripture the letters of john recognized as scripture because the apostles had canonical authority the other group that had canonical authority is the prophets and what does it mean when the bible talks about prophets here it doesn't mean any prophet existing today they are not included in this definition it doesn't mean any prophet that has existed in time past and it doesn't mean any prophet who existed in the New Testamental era. This prophet here refers specifically to the canonical prophets. That is the prophets who wrote scripture. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, up to Malachi. These are canonical prophets. And they are the foundation stone around which the church is built so why is that so and i said that yesterday the uh, the prophets of old pointed jesus is coming the messiah is coming the apostles tell us he has come that's all he is coming he has come so these two tell us the rock is coming and then the other says, the rock has come. The Messiah is coming. The Messiah has come. The Messiah is coming. This is who the Messiah is. That is what, this is what he came to do. This is what we have to do to believe in him. Those two, the Old Testament prophets who prophesied about the coming of Jesus and the apostles who witnessed the life of Jesus and point us to him, they are the foundations on the rock. Every other person who is called apostle or prophet is peripheral. That means he is like the cat in the prayer room. He is like the throwing of hands and the walking of the prayer person. It, it, he is peripheral but not central to the Christian message. Because the Christian message is Christ Jesus, the apostles of the New Testament and the prophets of the Old Testament. What they said about Christ, that is the center of Christianity. Now, why am I saying this? I am saying this because if we are not careful, we forget about the center and focus on the extra. And we can invent all kinds of things outside of what is central to the Christian faith. The Christian faith is not defined by you or I. The Christian faith is defined by what the prophets said and what the apostles said. So my job, your job, the job of every Christian is you have to go and study. What did the prophets say about the coming Messiah? What did the apostles say about the Messiah who has come? That knowledge, 
that understanding is the basis on which we build our faith. What to for Ayana was saying, a dancing, a wabruchi, a shanty media, ye know, ye dancing, a woman can no more yada, and unty, the better for me and the yenso, at the best summo. Now, a papaya can say, we know it was ya, once what ya, a wadrin to the same, and unty, and a comment section, a daho, a demo. Subscribe to a YouTube channel, and like now for a sign, share, for my for from us, a witchy, and a bench, ye, ah, a shanty media, meeting at the Ottoman Comoba and a coffee from a shanty goody. Macro.